wanting to know that we're calling this a fire conference. Amen. Amen. And we're expecting something supernaturally to happen by the grace of God. Amen. And you have to have a heart of expectancy. Amen. Amen. You have to know that something is going to transform, that something is going to change. Something is going to be different. And it's going to be good. And it's going to be for the betterment. Amen. Of us. Hallelujah. Bless God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I bless you, Jesus. I exalt you. You're wonderful and you're so sweet. Yes, God. Oh, come, let us adore him. Praise God. 
God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God, and I'm going to borrow your attention for just a few minutes. And I'm coming out of the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And there's so much in this segment of scripture that can be talked about, but I'm going to light in on just a particular part. <clears throat> And I'm going to begin at verse 16. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him. And Ahab went to meet Elijah. When he saw Elijah, he said to him, Is that you, you troubler of Israel? I have not made trouble for Israel, Elijah replied, but you and your father's family have. You have abandoned the Lord's command and have followed the babes. Now summon the people from all over Israel to meet me on Mount Carmel and bring the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent word through all Israel and assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left. But Baal has 450 prophets. Get two bulls for us, let them choose one for themselves, and let them cut it into pieces and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. I will prepare the outer, the other bull and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by fire, he is God. Then all the people said, what you say is good. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one of the bulls and prepare it first. Since there are so many of you, call on the name of your God, but do not light the fire. So they took the bull, given them, and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon. Oh, Baal, answer us, they shouted. But there was no response. No one answered. And they danced around the altar they had made. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Shout louder, he said. Surely he is a god. Perhaps he is deep in thought or busy, or traveling. Maybe he is sleeping and must be awakened. So they shouted louder, and they slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until their blood flowed. Midday passed, and they continued their fanatic prophesying until the time for the evening sacrifice. But there was no evening, but there was no response no one answered. No one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come here to me. They came to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord, which was in ruins. And I want you to pay close attention to this. He prepared, he restored the altar. He didn't create a new altar, but he restored the altar. Now we hear the story. You've got Baal's people over here, and you've got 450 false prophets over here, and you have Elijah over here. And they're doing a little dance, and they're doing all this stuff over here. Oh, Baal, come down. Oh, Baal, come on and do this. Oh, Baal, we know you can do it. Oh, Baal, you are the most high God. And they were doing this all day long. All day long. I mean, I imagine they were a little bit tired. So Elijah's over here. He's going, oh, what's the matter? They don't sleep today? Or 
Did he go out shopping? Or has he gone on a cruise? Or some type of vacation? And they're still crying out, Oh, Belle! Oh, Belle! And nothing happened. But Elijah comes over. And he is about to do something phenomenal. And that phenomenal thing is that he rebuilt. He rebuilt the altar. He didn't set up a new one, but he rebuilt it. And if you continue to read the story, it says how he took 12 stones to do that. And those 12 stones were symbolic of the 12 names, the 12 tribes in Israel. And you have to remember, during this particular time, when Elijah was doing this, he was called to the northern region where you had 10 of those tribes there. And then when you came down to the southern portion, there were two others there. So there was a division. But Elijah takes and he puts 12 stones together. Not only does he do that, he has them to deal to, to dig a trench here around this sacrifice. And if you continue to read the story, it tells you how he tells them three times to take four uh, pails, four buckets of water, and to pour over into that trench. And you may be wondering, why did he tell him to take and to, to, to do this four times. Well, the issue was that Baal uh, 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 prophets were trying to do this thing on their own. They were doing all of this fleshly stuff. But Elijah wanted the people to know, hey, there's nothing flesh about this. If fire comes down to receive this sacrifice, it's going to be God and God alone. It's not going to be anything that I have done. And you may be asking yourself the question tonight, how can I experience the supernatural? And I have two words to share with you. Prayer and worship. That is how you are going to experience the supernatural. You see how Baal's prophets, they were saying all these things in their flesh. They were doing all these things that they thought looked good. All these things that they thought felt good, but they did not get anything done. But Elijah Elijah had been known to set the pace because everything, even up to this moment, Elijah was a man of prayer. Elijah kept the word of God his focus. Elijah allowed the Lord to order his footsteps so that he was not producing something false. Unfortunately, believers in our time today, we are like Baal prophets. We do things to conjure up our own fire. We say, God, I need a miracle. God, I need a healing. God, I need to be delivered. God, I need to be set free. So we try to help God a little bit. We do things in our flesh. We do things out of emotion. We do things because everybody else is doing it. And then we do not get any results. But the Spirit of God is calling us, amen, to examine the altars of our life, the altars of our heart. And he's wanting to know, why are you doing this? Why are you saying this? And yet we cry out to God, God, why are we not getting any results? Why won't you answer my prayer? Why am I still in this fix? Why am I still in this situation? Because we're trying to motivate him and come in another way. But there's only one way that we can experience the supernatural power of God is it that we do it his way. The Baal prophets, they did everything their way. They were cutting themselves. They were screaming and, and saying all kind of things, but nothing happened. But Elijah did it God's way, in God's time, the way that he should have done it. And we have to do the same thing. What are we doing that's affecting the altars of our life? 
are we are we are we praying what we think should be done mm -hmm. or are we praying the word of God Amen. are we putting God into remembrance of what he said are we putting him into remembrance of what he's done but instead, because we want something to happen and we want it to happen now, we involve ourselves in idle things. We involve ourselves in a form of idolatry and idol worship, and we don't even realize it. We'll come in, we'll do a little jingle dance on Sundays and Wednesday nights. We'll do a little jingle of a prayer, but it's not going any place because we have not properly built the altar. The altars of our flesh and our emotions have to be broken down so that the altar of the spirit of the living God can be resurrected and grounded and rooted in us. And that is when we will experience the supernatural power of God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How are we going to repair the altar of our lives and our hearts? What is it that we're doing? How are we living? It's easy when we're all together to say, oh, we're going to experience something supernatural, something powerful. But the moment we walk out of those doors and we enter into our homes, what kind of life are we setting before? Are the life according to the word of God? Are we speaking the word of God? Are we moved by the word of God? Are we moved by what we see and what we feel? We want to repair the altar. And we can't experience this supernatural power of God until that altar has been restored. Repaired in our lives. Amen. What's your prayer life like? How long did you pray today? How long did you spend time in this word today? How long did you tune out the television, the radio, and anything or anyone else that would dilute this preciousness of God's word? How long have you stayed at the altar and you stayed there until you realized, God, I'm not leaving until you finish with me. How long? But we want to come and we want to just quote a little. Uh, for he was wonderful for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities, and the chastisement of my peace was upon me and by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed. I'm healed. Then we back up. No! We've got to spend time in prayer with the Lord. Our lives have to change. Our mindset has to change. How we speak has to change. How we live has to change. So that we are this living sacrifice that's talked about in Romans 12. 1. So that when we offer up our worship unto God, it doesn't just go to the ceiling. But it goes straight up into the heavens. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Transformation. You have to understand this. Because of time's sake, I, I'm, I'm not going into everything, but 1 Kings 18 is a powerful, prophetic chapter. Because before Elijah had told him about the rain, they had to do something first. There was a preparation. There was a preparation. If you're going to experience the supernatural, there has to be some preparation. We are shouting supernatural power of God. Fall down on us for what have we done to prepare for the coming of the supernatural, the point reigning of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Preparation. Elijah understood that and he took the time to do that so because he knew that what God was about to do 
It had to be done in an order. It had to be done with force. And he did that. He made that altar. He prepared that altar. When he built those, those 12 stones, there was a sense of unity. There was unity. And when, when we're expecting the supernatural power of God, you can't have this broken stuff going on with you. Even in the house, and we're expecting the supernatural power of God. There cannot be disunity, but there has to be unity. Unity in us, then unity in us as a church family. For the supernatural power of God to come. Then, with our prayer, when it's affixed and when it's sweet, and when we've spent this beautiful essence of a time with the Lord, we're getting prepared for something. We're prepared for something we may not necessarily see. We may not necessarily be able to feel or touch. But we know because our altars are being prepared for what's coming. Glory be to God. And when we get to that point, You'll notice on in that chapter, Elijah, he took, it says how he, he got down and how he, he got in a prayer position. You've got to position yourself. You know, prayer is a position. Worship is a position. It's a position that you are channeling and that you're taking forth in the spirit realm. It's not necessarily something you can see or touch, but it's, it's there. It's a supernatural thing that's happening. So you've got to position yourself in this prayer. Then you've got to position yourself even as you worship. You'll see he sent the servant back. He said, hey, go, go tell me what you see. And, and he sent that guy back seven times. And finally, if you read on in the chapter, you'll find out how on the seventh time, the guy comes back. He says, hey, I uh, see, see, see something gathering up there like a little man's fist. Gathering up. Elijah knew something happened. He knew that after three years that it was about to rain. And I'm telling you in this place tonight, if you will begin to repair the altar, repair the altar. And I was tired. And 
there was a truck at our door. And it was the, uh, it was, they were coming to, they wanted to repossess some, some furnishings in our home. And I looked at that man. I was tired now. I was tired. And I looked at him and I said, you can't come. You can't come in my house. And he said, well, can I at least come in, use the telephone so I can tell my manager that you said we can't get this furniture? And I said, no, you can't. Leave. That was a lot of boldness. But I went into the house. And I remember that night I fell into a deep sleep. I was weary. I needed some rain in my life. And in the sleep, there was a knock at my door. And I opened the door and it was a man with a gun. And he said, you come out. He says, because I'm going to kill you. And I came out of the house. I'm making this a little short. I came out of the house and he had the gun pointed at me. But glory be to God, some rain came. I looked up and in the sky, the sky was filled with angels. The whole sky filled with angels. True story now. The whole sky filled. And here, right here, the Lord Jesus was coming down. And just as that man was about to pull the trigger to shoot me, he fell dead. And then Jesus ascended back up. And I cried, oh, don't go, don't go, don't go. And then there was a policeman there. And the policeman said, just call this number. Everything's going to be all right. The next morning, I got up. I called the furniture people. Everything was all right. I got some rain because I knew the word says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. I shall not be in need. True story. Many of you don't know, don't know a lot about me, but I take care of my husband. My husband has been on a bed of, 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 uh, of sickness for about 14 years. He had, um, had had many strokes, a lot of strokes, up into 2007. He had what you called a brainstem stroke. A brainstem stroke means that his heart could stop beating at any time, his blood pressure rate could drop, um, he, I take care of him at home. He's not, he's not in a nursing home. I take care of him at home. So he has a, 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 what we call a super pubic catheter here that's to help him to urinate. Then he has another tube here uh, so that we can feed him through a tube. He's not able to move his left side at all. His right side is very much limited. He's in diapers. He's still able to talk. And the reason I'm telling you about this rain, because I've had plenty of times in my life when, just like the children of Israel were three years, where there was a drought, and it appeared that nothing was moving and nothing was happening. Amen. And I'm still doing everything. I'm confessing God's word. I'm staying in that position. I'm staying in my worship position. And it keeps
Hallelujah. Take the position. Check your altars. Check your altars. Before this conference is over, supernatural things set on vogue. Before you take and you indulge and move into another week, supernatural things sit in vogue. Take your position. Begin to worship God as if it's the last time. Worship him with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, from the youngest in this house to the oldest. Because rain is coming. The floodgates of heaven. Amen. They are open. They are open now. They are open now. They are open. You reach out and you receive. Amen. The abundance of rain. I, I wish you would just take and you would capture that in the spirit that that rain is coming. You said rain is coming. Rain is coming in my life. Rain is coming in my house. Rain is coming in my marriage. Rain is coming in my ministry. Rain is coming. I'm not going to move. I'm not going to be, be dismayed because I know that rain is coming. Hallelujah. You can be encouraged today. And you can know that today. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Your position. Your position, your position has to change this week. Even now. Check, check that heart. God, is there anything in here? Is there anything in here? Is there any idolatry in me, Lord? A a anything that I'm putting before you? Anything that's hindering you moving greatly in my life, Lord? Yeah, yeah, check that heart. Check that heart. Because the worst thing in wanting to experience the supernatural is to be, amen, like the prophets of Baal, set in your own fire. Jesus, oh God. You don't want to set your own fire. Amen. Because that will burn out. But you want the fire of God. That's everlasting. I'm going to sit down and share one verse with you. Listen to this. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. It's okay. Listen to this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I bless your name. I bless your name, oh God. Ah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. 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 Check your heart. Check it. Check it. Check it. Listen. It says this, Isaiah 50, verse 10. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the word of his servant? Let him who walk in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord. In other words, don't try to light your own fire. Even when it's dark, even when it, it seems like, oh God, I, I can't see. I don't know where I am. It, it, I, 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 I look up, there's darkness. I look down, there's darkness. I look all around me. Don't light your own fire. That's right. Don't light it. It says, but now all you who light fire and provide yourselves with flaming torches, go walk in the light of your fire and of the torches you have set ablaze. This is what you shall receive from my hand. You will lie down in torment. Exactly what happened with the prophets of Baal. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of God wants you to not just say, okay, we had another three-day service. Mm -hmm. We had another fire conference. Mm -hmm. We had another uh, 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 exuberant time. But he wants you to experience the supernatural, amen, at all times. 
not just a sometime. When you wake up in the morning, hey, it's supernatural. When you go through the day, hey, it's supernatural. Amen. Amen. When something happens to you exuberantly, hey, it's supernatural. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The altar, your prayer, and your worship will produce supernatural results every time. One time my husband was in the hospital and his blood pressure continued to go down. I think it went, for those of you that may, may know medical terminology, it had gotten as low, it was like 40 over 30 something. He was drifting out of here. And the doctors didn't know why. They didn't know what was happening. But he spent three days in the intensive care unit. But you know what? The position of prayer and the position of worship produced the supernatural. And he was out of there in a week. But your prayer life is important. It's important. How many of you are needing something supernatural from God? Amen. And I think that could be all of us. We're needing something supernatural from him. Right there, wherever it is. You know, first of all, get your position going. Amen. If you've had a prayerless life, begin to repent before God. And it's none of anybody else's business. That's between you and the Father. Amen. Amen. It's between you and Daddy God. So, okay, Daddy God, I haven't spent time with you like I should. I haven't allowed your word to penetrate. And I haven't eaten upon your word as I should. So I'm sorry, Daddy God. I've allowed more of the television to creep on the inside of me than I have of your word. So that when situations come up, I'm identifying with Dr. Phil and Oprah more than I am with you, God. I'm sorry. Because he wants to do something special just for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Just begin to stand to your feet for a moment. Hallelujah. 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 Open the floodgates of heaven. Let 